at Phil Duran, a successful Hollywood writer of hit shows such as oh, uh, Sanford and Son, The Wonder Years, Who's the Boss, All in the Family. After 25 years of this, his wife, Nancy, surprises him by buying a house in Tuscany, Italy. So Phil Duran goes to Tuscany, Italy, writes this book called The Reluctant Tuscan. You see this house for the first time. What I can imagine what it looked like. I, I think I almost screamed. I mean, I was expecting the worst, and I was not disappointed. Uh, it was a small place made of stone, and the first thing I noticed is there was no heat, there was no electricity, there was no water, there was no windows, there was no doors, and for sitting on top of the hill, it had no road. <laughs> now, it was actually perfect for its current occupants, the scorpions and the spiders, and I understand the ones who lived there before liked it too, the goats, and before them was the German army who uh, set up a machine gun nest so they could shoot at people in the village. So you have a major construction. There was a lot of work here. to do. There really uh, was. And in this country, if you do a major construction, redo a kitchen, it breaks up whole marriages. I can't imagine in a foreign country what that's Well, like. in Italy, in Tuscany, there's a million laws and no rules. And we went around and around trying to get someone to approve and give us approval to do this. And we finally got a breakthrough when Nancy was able to go up, up here before the community board. And uh, the way she did this, she walked in wearing this low-cut pe peasant gown, peasant blouse with a lot of cleavage and a crucifix. So I think she had all the bases covered. In the course of her presentation, uh, she broke down crying. She invoked the spirit of her mother. And uh, finally, they, uh, they gave us some permission so to do it. this is the magic. This is how you get things done. Well, it's the beginning because now we had to get workers to actually come and do this. Now, this isn't easy either because you know, you can't ever call someone up in Italy and talk to them about a job. They need a face-to-face -face meeting, and that's so they can use their vast array of hand gestures. <laughs> right, when you go to them with some kind of a thing, and, and they give you this. What, which is? This says, you think you've got problems, what will I tell you about my life? Mm -hmm. And then when you tell them about more, they say, now this means you're crazy. And then finally you plead with them, and it's like, no way. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what you're up against. Uh, but so you've got to deal with a bureaucracy, which in, in this country is tough enough. How do you deal with a bureaucracy in a foreign country? It's doubly tough because it's like a code that they operate with and you have to figure it out. Like we just kept going to the bank to talk to the banker about getting our, our account set up and he was never there. <laughs> well, it took some detective work, but we finally figured out, well, he was around, but he wasn't in the bank. He was around by 11 o'clock. He was in the cafe having cappuccino. At, at 4 o'clock, he was in the cafe having wine. And at 6 o'clock, he was at his mistress. Now, we, we couldn't knock on the door then, but we knew where he was. So uh, This sounds like a lot of money, though. I mean, it's frightening of the kind of money you spend here. I can't yes. imagine what it's like. It was, it was uh, a lot. It, it, it started to mount up very fast. And our first uh, inkling of this came very quickly when uh, our contractor, Umberto, presented, presented us with his first bill. And it was like, oh, my God, sticker shock. So we thought, this, we're going to run out of money by Thursday at this rate. We've got to do something. So in Italy, it's kind of hard to talk to people about money. Everything is kind of personal, and you're now friends with them and this kind of thing. So um, we had to be a little bit ingenious. So I was online, and I happened to come across a picture of the Sopranos, all the, all the men in the Sopranos. And I printed out the picture, put it on nice photographic paper, framed it. We put it on the wall. We invited Umberto to come over and talk about the bill. <laughs> so he walks in, and we position him to look at the uh, picture. So he comes in and he's drinking his coffee and he looks and he says, who is that? And so Nancy says, well, that's my cousin Tony from Newark. And in fact, Tony is in the construction business and other businesses. And I was so concerned about your bill, I faxed it to him. <laughs> well, Tony says, I don't know what's going on. This guy, and, and Berto practically leaped over the table, grabbed our bill and said, no, no, that's wrong. I'm, it, it's, my, it's actually mine is this and so. This is what you have to do. <laughs> so at, at some point, Phil Duran, successful Hollywood writer, makes a turn and, and buys into Tuscan, right? Right. I, at some point, I was no longer the reluctant Tuscan. And um, it changes you. The being there just changes you in, uh, in funny ways. Uh, even today, if I go back to Italy from America, I have to reset all my default settings. I have to lower my expectations and widen my appreciation in that I have to expect to do less, accomplish less in any given day, but appreciate what I do more. And I can actually put my finger on the specific instance when it kind of began to change for me. And, and I hadn't been there very long. I was wandering around this land, and I'm thinking, what am I doing here? What are, are we? And all of a sudden, I looked up, and there was this trellis, and I saw a clump of beautiful blue, cobalt blue grapes, plump, perfect. And I picked one, and I put it in my mouth, and the taste, the taste of sunshine just about exploded in my mouth. And I thought, oh no, 
I've only been here for a short time, and already Tuscany is starting to work its magic on me. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to start feeling happy for absolutely no reason. And happy you were, and it's all in this book, The Reluctant Tuscan, How I Discovered My Inner Italian by Phil Durant. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tom.